Okay, so good morning. Hope all of you are doing good. Welcome to week 10. Um, welcome to all the online students, students who are there in person, as well as to the e learning students. I hope all of you have completed your assessments. Please ensure that you get that done um, by next week. There's a, there is a due date for that. Okay, we'll. Uh, We'll get started. Um, if we, if you'll have a quick um, uh, over, let's look at a quick overview of what we have been covering uh, as of now. We have been looking at counseling skills. We spent the uh, last three classes looking at skills of attending. We looked at responding skills, and last week we looked at questioning. Today, we're going to wrap up with the last two skills, as important as they are, because it helps to wrap the entire session and bring the counselee to a place of uh, understanding, to a place of um, owning up responsibility for their own, for their issues and what they could do to bring about some action towards um, uh, resolving their concerns or their issues. Okay, so we're going to be, so doing, we're going to be looking at two skills today. One is personalizing, is personalizing, and the other is initiating. Okay, so personalizing and initiating uh, is what we're going to look at. I'm just going to present my screen. Okay. All right. So this comes um, the, the skill of personalizing. Uh, we we what is if if you're looking at the word the meaning of personalize, um, um, and especially when you're talking uh, when someone comes to you with a struggle, often you will find that there is a lot of helpless talk about a third person or about the other person in question. Uh, it could be you know, their friends or their employees, their uh, family members, their spouse, their parents, their children, or somebody else, right? The focus, when someone's coming with you with a problem, a lot of times the focus is on a third person. Like if someone's coming and talking to you about their marriage, the focus will be on their spouse. Or someone's talking to you about parenting issues, the focus is on the child. Or if they're talking about their work issues, the focus is on the employer. Or if you're talking about friends, the focus is on a specific, on another person. Now, what happens is when the focus is on others, they are externalizing their experiences. So what does that mean? When when we're talking about how someone is impacting our situation, uh, what it indirectly means is that I don't have any responsibility in this problem myself. The problem is all with the other person. So that's what it means by externalizing. So they are putting the responsibility on somebody else. So we always um, pass on the blame to somebody else for the struggles or the problems that we may be facing. Now, in counseling, uh, you you know it is you understand that the point is is not to change the other person, but we would want to pass on to personalize understanding of what they are going through and how they may be contributing or they may be responsible for the situation that they may be in. So what does personalizing do? Personalizing, the word in itself says, I am taking a certain problem and trying to personalize it. That is, to see how much I am responsible, or how much I contribute, or what is my, uh, what is, what is my take, or, what is, or how, how do I handle it? So personalizing 
helps uh, the counselee in internalizing their experience. So, like we said, if they externalize it when they are taking, when they're putting the blame on somebody else, but you are helping to internalize it. So, when you focus, when you help them to focus upon themselves, they internalize their experience. Um, now that uh, remember uh, that, um, uh, yeah. So, so when so so these are the two things that we said. You know, you you focus on others, and so that's when they externalize their experiences. But when you focus upon themselves, they internalize their experiences. So, what does this word internalizing uh, have to do? It makes the counselee accountable for their own experience. They are taking onus or they are taking responsibility. They are looking at it from also their point of view and what probably needs to be changed as a result of this internalizing that happens. So this is uh, extremely essential for counselees to do in order to move forward with the uh, with the next next part of after you've done the exploration after you've done the uh, um, uh, uh, the the finding out and what the problem is in order for them to understand it they need to actually personalize and make that experience their own make them accountable to that to the experience that they are um, working on so personalizing emphasizes internalizing this experience which makes us um, see it a lot more clearly clearly so in other words we really become human as we internalize our understanding of ourselves so we grow ourselves when we begin to know ourselves we begin to see what how have i contributed it what is there within me that could cause the uh, problem that is there externally so this is a very important part of counseling uh, when we are being very directive in our approach which means directive in approaches when you're giving too many advices uh, we fail to allow a counselee to really internalize their problem to really look at their own experience and bring about change because when you 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 get into an advice mode of being directive so let's say you know our a case of uh, susan you remember susan's case where she is the first very case we've spoken about so many times about susan being fed up of her marriage and she wants to call it the quits because her husband prize on her so in that case when what what are you helping susan to do or when you're giving an advice to susan why don't you talk to him or why don't you do this or why do you do that or why don't you get the help of somebody else you've uh, what you've managed to do is not allowed her to internalize her problem, to see, okay, what am I doing to contribute to this, for her to really come to a process of change and growth. So it needs to be internalized. And that's why this skill uh, of personalizing becomes very, very important for a shift to take place, for a change to take place. All this while, we've been building rapport, we've been helping uh, our counselees see that we care for them, that their feelings are important. There is no judgment. We are we are um, uh, uh, we are discussing things with them to help them see that we have understood. So all of this it builds up to this place where now you are personalizing. You are helping them see how, or you you would like them to see how they are contributing to their to the to the struggle that they may be going through. Okay. Um, now this is this is important because, like I said, it helps in the growth of the counseling session in itself. Okay, so what are you doing uh, while you're personalizing? You're enabling the counselee to understand where they are in relation to where they want to be. You, when you personalize the issue, when you help them to internalize it, they will tell you. You know, this is where I am, and that is where I'd like to be. So they begin to see the difference between where they are and where they would like to be. Because at the end of it, you want your you want to help your counselee move from a uh, from a particular space to another, uh, sorry, to to another place. 
and that's that's why uh, personalizing is is key in working with with your counselors now what do you personalize you personalize three things four things feeling you personalize the meaning of the problem the personalize the problem in itself and the goal. What does the person want to do about it? Four things. You're personalizing the feeling, which means you're helping them actually take a responsibility of what they're feeling. Like, for example, uh, when the counselee says, you know, I'm very upset because so-and-so did that, through your responses, you're helping them internalize and accept and come to a place of of really internalizing saying, okay, this is the way that I'm feeling about it. I am feeling upset or I am feeling angry. So it is, it's a personal emotion. That's why responding skills are very, very important because your counselor can tell you a content of a certain situation, but unless and until you match it up with a feeling, they are not going to experience their emotions for it. And that's why the responding skills are so important in counseling so that you can prepare them for this stage of actually personalizing the personalizing that feeling so when a counselor is telling you you know uh, this happened uh, with my with my spouse this is what went wrong this is, is what is going on uh, you know we had a couple of uh, arguments with each other if he's told you she or he has told you just to contend but when you're going deeper into saying, I see that it makes you very disturbed, or I see that it, it uh, brings you to a place of uh, unsettling. So you have explored the, the, the feeling that they may be going through. Now, how do you personalize the feeling when you're actually saying, you seem really upset and you don't want to be this way, or you feel extremely unsettled about what's happening? You're actually helping to personalize the feeling. So th these four things, personalizing feeling, meaning, problem, and goal is very important. So when you're personalizing, the first and foremost thing that you must do as, as you, you're engaging in that is to be able to build a strong, uh, solid base of understanding, which means your sessions prior, your initial sessions of um, getting to know them getting to understand that problem must have must be solid it must come from a place of uh, solid understanding there should be a good understanding about what the problem is that they have come to you with and that's why you know if you if you remember whenever we've spoke whenever we've had these um, role plays i keep telling you don't get into solution mode don't get in, into fixing it because you have not dug deep inside to really peel the onion to really understand the core of it so before you begin to personalize this you must build a solid base of understanding your counselee their problem their situation what they may be feeling how helpless they are that should be there and that can happen only when your communication is you know, you're able to communicate whatever you've understood. That's what it means by interchangeable base of communication is you're being able to communicate and express what you have understood. OK, now, in addition to to doing that, you also need to respond to their feeling. They should feel adequately heard, adequately understood, adequately having vent out their emotions well enough before you can get to the stage of personalizing. So um, it, it, one of the ways that you would know that you haven't responded enough to feelings is when, when you're attempting to personalize, they're going back and back again to the same situation, which means they haven't had enough of actually talking and discussing and bearing out their feelings and emotions about the particular situation. So personalizing, uh, one of the important things is to build a good understanding of the counseling, of their situation, of the of whatever is uh, the conditions that's, that they're coming with. Uh, and this is done by good communication. And secondly, it's done by 
being able to respond to feelings. So, so this is something that needs to be done. You cannot personalize within two minutes of your session with the with the counselor, right? That you can't when they're telling you about, uh, you know, this morning I had a fight with the with my neighbor. The second the second uh, sentence cannot be. Uh, would you like to tell me what is it? The, how did you contribute to it? You can't say that. You know that that makes it extremely insensitive because they feel you haven't heard them enough. So they need to go through that that space, that situation where they're able to express their feeling, talk about it, come to a place of uh, beginning to see how how bad, how mad, or how angry, or how difficult that situation is for them. Okay. Now, once this is done, is when you're getting into the next part of it. What I'd like to do is probably take you through a certain example. I'll build it up in a little, a little by little, so that you know it makes us makes more sense of explaining what it means to personalize feeling, to personalize meaning, problem, and goal. Okay. So the uh, the example here is of a second PU student who says that things are not going so good for her in school. I just seem to be floundering. I fake it every day, but inside I'm really down because I'm not sure of what to do or where I want to go. So here, the uh, you know, even after they're relating all of this, you need to adequately respond to her feeling. So what do you think she feels? And I, I just just put a very simple, you feel sad, but there are there are many things that you can build on. You know, you feel disappointed. You feel that you are being very pretentious, or uh, you feel there is there's nothing real about the way that you are dealing with people. Uh, you know, so so all of this. The more that you are able to respond to their feelings, the much more of meat that you you really get. But but nevertheless, what I'm trying to hear is say is when a person is talking about their situation, go to respond to how they're feeling. You should adequately um uh, explore that part of it how they feel about the situation before you move forward okay so when you are uh, when in this case in anita's case when you are when she's actually bringing about her feelings you're helping her to see that she feels some bad or sad about something that is external so you're actually getting her to take onus for what she is feeling and why is this important? Why should we get the feelings out in the open? Because it, w once they talk about it, it's how they learn to deal with that. They're able to uh, they're able to express, and they're able to find a way to deal with their anger or their sadness or whatever emotions that they may be go going through. So the more that you explore the feelings, the more likely they will begin to channel them constructively. Right. Instead of maybe shouting or screaming, they have become more aware of their anger, and they say, "Okay, maybe next time I should probably walk out of the room." So you're you're actually helping them uh, when you explore their feelings to get them to uh, bring about some way of how these these emotions can be channeled properly, can be uh, can be um, uh, uh, you know swerved in such a way that is actually helpful for them. Okay, so. Um, it, you so even as as you're doing this, you you it's important to okay. I'm not going to get into that slide. It's important to uh, respond not just to the feeling but also to the content. What are they feeling sad about? What are they feeling bad about? Rather than just saying, "Oh, you feel very disappointed," but you could you could build on. Okay, you feel disappointed that um, you know you're, you're not able to uh, able to work through. Um, your classes, or you feel helpless that uh, you know, there's nobody to help you, or you can build on it. So adding to the feeling as well as to the content is important because it makes it helps them to merge the two. What are they feeling sad about? What are they feeling upset about? Okay. So taking back the uh, Anita's example, where you're personalizing the feeling as well as the content here. Um, she, so the counselor here says, you feel upset because you're struggling with schoolwork. So there is a, an emotion and there's a content. Why am I upset? Because I can't do this. Why am I sad? Because I'm faking it every day. Why am I uh, uncertain? 
because I don't know what to do and I don't know where to go. Right. So these things do need to come together. Why are they feeling a certain way and what makes them feeling? And that makes it more personalized. That helps them to see, OK, I'm feeling like this because I'm struggling at schoolwork, because it helps you. Why does this help you? Now, if you were just to say, OK, you feel upset and leave it at that, you're not helping yourself as a counselor to pick on something that she may potentially want to change. So over here she's saying, I feel upset, you feel upset because you're struggling with schoolwork. So there is some potential change that she can do, and that's what you want her to do, to, to internalize the fact that, OK, I am struggling with schoolwork, and I have to do something to find a way out. So that's why it's important to merge the feeling alongside with the content. Otherwise, you're going to get lost. If you're just going to say, OK, you feel upset, you feel angry, you feel sad, you feel confused, sorry, uh, it, it is going to get, get you not knowing what to do next. But if you're able to merge two things like this, you feel upset when you're struggling with schoolwork, the schoolwork becomes uh, something that she can look forward to figuring out some change, because she will personalize it. OK, so if I were to personalize this, if I were to move into the next thing, I'd say, OK, you feel upset because you're struggling with schoolwork. So I may ask, what would you like your schoolwork to look like? Right. Or what do you think would be one or two things that if you did do would improve your schoolwork? So here, what have I done? I've gone back to the counselee and got them to think about ways of how they can improve their schoolwork. right? And that's why this is so important of connecting the feeling as well as the content together. OK, so, so when, once you do that, you're helping them move into another place of action. OK, so this is personalizing feeling. And alongside with feeling, it is personalizing the content. OK, next one is you're personalizing the meaning personalizing the meaning of the problem. So what are some of the things that you would want to know is what is the effect of the situation on the client? Now, for example, in Anita's case, she is not able to manage her schoolwork. So what implications happen as a result of her not paying attention in school? So are you saying what are the consequences or what are the effects of that situation on her? So when you are personalizing, you are helping to build a certain, what do you say, a case or a, or a base to help them begin to see that, yes, I have a part to play in this, and I must try and work this out. So you're asking, what have been the implications been as a result of this situation? So uh, when, with Anita's case, you're saying, OK, because you have not been able to pay attention at school, what have been some of the effects? So she said, OK, you know, I, I have lost my friends, or my teachers keep shouting at me, or my parents keep shouting at me. I feel very low. So she's able to, she, she's uh, helping you to realize that there is a meaning to this schoolwork that, cannot, that is not being done. There's a meaning to it. Because that's something like a helpful tool for you to help her motivate her into doing something. OK, so I hope you are. I hope all of you are with me. Is everybody with me? Uh, sorry, I can't see anyone. OK, all right, OK. So so the the fact of uh, um, so, the, so that's what we mean by to understand the implications. So what is the effects of a certain situation on the council? That really helps them to understand the meaning. Again, another meaning that you will need to determine is what are the beliefs that causes your counselee to feel the way about that situation? What are the assumptions that they have made uh, with regard to the with, with regard to the with the problem? Uh, so, so for example, um, this girl Anita, when when you're looking at uh, her 
uh, you know, when, when you're looking at this, the situation, you're looking at, like I said, implications and what, what could be the certain beliefs that she may have. All right. So, and this is a formula that you use. You feel dash because you, and let's look at the example. And then I think it'll, it'll, it'll be more helpful. OK, so here it's the same situation. There's, there's nothing that's changed. But if you look at the uh, example, you feel upset because your future will be affected if you don't do well in college this year. So this is an implication, right? It's an implication that if she doesn't do well, her future could be affected if she doesn't do well. So that's the first one, the implication. There could also be some kind of thoughts or assumptions that she has made as a result of this situation. Now, the example is not here. But maybe, you, you know, if she were to say, uh, I, I would ask her, OK, but when you haven't done well in school, what has that meant to you? So she may say, I feel stupid, or I feel I can't do anything right. I feel I'm incapable. All right. So this is the assumption that she has made, all because she has not done well in school, that it, she is incapable, or she's not She's not effective in her uh, in her work. So this is what. So how I would put that is if I want to personalize uh, and and look at the assumptions. So I may say, you know, you feel really concerned because because of the fact that you haven't done so well in school. It really has impacted the way that you see yourself, or it has impacted your your capability. It has impacted your confidence. So going back to the earlier slide, I have looked at what the assumption is. The assumption could be that unless I do well, I'm not smart. Uh, I'm not. I'm not confident because I am not doing well. So you see that there is an assumption that she could have been have made as a result of the of of the problem, and that's what you want to highlight. You know, you feel upset because. You feel you are incapable of doing things because you have uh, done badly in school or because you have lost marks or whatever, right? So, so you're you're highlighting that and helping her see the kind of assumptions that she's probably made as a result of this this issue, right? And that's what you want to. If you remember the A B C D E model, you are really going to help help them to. Um, uh, dispute a certain belief that they are operating from. Okay, I am. Uh, I'm not able to do well in school because I have no capacity, or because I'm dumb, or because I'm stupid. So that becomes a personal belief, which is what you want to help them to see and personalize. Right? You feel um, you feel upset because you you feel you're not capable enough to do something. Right? So my next question then would turn to be. If that was a if that was an assumption that could change, what is an assumption that you would make, right? So here, I am probing as to what is a certain belief that she could operate from, rather than this belief to knowing that this belief is not helping her operate in class. What is another belief that she could operate from? Okay, so this is why personalizing the meaning also becomes very very important to help them first of all see what are the implications or the effects of the situation and secondly what are the beliefs they have created or what are the assumptions they've made as a result of the uh, situation that is at hand okay all right i hope this makes sense i hope everyone is following sorry i'm unable to see anybody i think it's really wrong with my screen I'm just going to stop sharing, and I'll share once again. Uh, students, are you able to see me? Yeah, OK. All right. OK. Um, okay, I'll just share that once again. Now I'm I wasn't able to see you. All.
ओके ओके ऑल राइट सो वी लुक्ड एट पर्सनलाइजिंग द द फीलिंग पर्सनलाइजिंग द मीनिंग नाउ इट इज टू पर्सनलाइज द प्रॉब्लम ओके व्हाट डज इट मीन टू कम टू अ प्लेस टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट 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 यू यू आर इन यू यू हैव यू कम टू फिगर आउट दैट दिस इज अ प्रॉब्लम दैट यू नीड टू रिजॉल्व यू नीड टू ब्रिंग अबाउट सम सम चेंज सम some difference in the way that it's happened so by what are you doing by personalizing the meaning you have begun to help them understand their situation in terms of its internal significance right what how is it significant for them internally but they have not yet come in terms with their behavior and how they may have contributed to the situation so this is where you define problem in new ways which further will help them come to new goals so you need to define the problem because you want them to define a goal okay so when you are personalizing the problem what you are actually doing is what is there about them that is contributing to the problem what is the problem in them that contributes to this larger issue okay and and here is a simple again a formula so you feel dash because you cannot like you feel upset because you cannot study or you cannot score or you cannot get into um, you know you you're not you're not able to resolve the struggle with your with your uh, spouse whatever so what you're doing is you are again creating Uh, uh, a space for them to really understand what what comes next which is to uh, con to to see the problem and see how they may be contributing to that problem in itself okay we'll just take the example a little further okay uh, so in this the next base of information you have is i am the school basketball team captain and i spend 2 hours every evening in practice i am left with no time or energy to study okay so so this is again an added information that has come about so when you want to personalize the problem you you could probably you bring about something like this you feel concerned or upset because you cannot spend enough time studying so here it is gone back to them that okay i need to study but i'm also involved in the basketball team and because of that i don't have enough time to study so you're actually getting them to see how they are contributing to the problem maybe it's not their proper time management or it's it, they aren't able to um prioritize whatever it may be the idea is to bring them back to a place of showing that this problem is mine to resolve okay i don't have enough time to study and that's why i'm not able to study it that's what you are attempting to do through these uh through these uh, uh these interactions right so here you feel upset because you cannot spend enough time studying or you feel concerned because there is so much to do on the sports front that you may be too exhausted before you can actually go study so you're actually helping the counselee see okay this is the problem and this is how i'm dealing with it or this is what what is happening as a result of my not being able to uh, do something now even as you're doing this it's very important to stay tuned to how the the counselee feels about themselves in relation to their problem or deficits like for this girl anita uh, the very fact that she's doing something uh you know in sports but she's beginning to see that that she can't do these two things well enough okay it's like a realization that uh i thought i could handle my studies and my basketball but i realize that i'm not una i'm unable to do that okay so it is important for us to see 
how they feel about things that are deficit in them, things that, that they are not very good at, all right? And keep, because sometimes they will realize something, but you always have to keep in tune to check, how do you feel about that? When you have understood that you can't probably do basketball and um, whatever studies and this together, what does that make you feel, right? Help them to to articulate that because they'll say, oh, I, I, you know, I thought I was really good at multitasking, but now I just realized that uh, I, I, I can't. I, I feel, I feel, uh, I can only manage one thing at a time, and it feels. It feels sad. It feels sad to know that I am not able to do that, right? So it's important to get them uh, attuned with what they are feeling at that problem, that point of time, even when it is in relation to certain problems and deficits, right? Because it can help you to build on getting them to uh, work on what what comes next. Okay. Now, uh, taking you further information, uh, she's saying. She said, I should never have agreed to being the captain. OK, so here you see there is a sense of um, maybe, uh, maybe uh, again, uh, uh, a sense of uh, realization. Right. And here, even though she said that, even though she's thought about that, there is there's probably a new feeling that's ar arisen. You feel angry because you have taken on more than you can handle. So you see that. Even as you're reflecting this, you're helping them see uh, and helping them come to a place of realization. So you say, yeah, I, I feel really upset that I didn't think about this, that I took on more than I could chew. I should have been more careful. So you see, as, as you are reflecting, as you are personalizing, they are coming to a place of deciding or coming to a place where they can take their next action. They can they can. They can move forward into the next part, which is to personalize goals. OK, I hope you are with me. We spoke about personalizing feeling first, the meaning, personalizing the problem well enough so that you can determine the goal. OK, now uh, your counselee is showing readiness to move from discussing their problems to discussing their goals when you have reached this point, OK? When they are able to personalize their own problems that I should have never taken up that captainship because I know that's what's affecting my ability to study. So you've come to a place because they have said, yeah, you know, I should have been, I should have thought of it a little better. I should have, uh, you know, uh, planned my day or I should have worked through something. So now they are ready to move from discussing about the problem into looking at a goal. OK, now they are ready when they do this for themselves rather than what you do for them. If you were to sit with your counselee and say, OK, you know, you're a basketball captain. This, uh, don't you think there is too many things you're doing? Isn't there, uh, you know, aren't you able, aren't you able to see that you can't multitask? If I were to say to them, they, it doesn't feel like they have taken up the readiness to um, uh, work through that. Okay, so they need to be ready when they when when they are able to do this for themselves. When they come to that place of a realization that something has to be has to be done. Okay, um, uh, so when you're establishing when when you go when you're personalizing goals, your what you're doing is you want to bring the uh, the counselee from where they are to where they want to be so she may say anita may say i really want to study better right but right now i'm not able to study and i'm able to see i'm the captain i'm doing all of this but i'm not able to study so what does personalizing goals mean you're getting them for from where they are right now to where they ought to be and you're also looking at when you're personalizing goals you're looking at what is it that's contributing to resolving this problem? What helps you to resolve this problem? So I may ask a question uh, uh, before this feeling thing. I may ask a question. Now, since you've realized that um, you know multitasking is something that you, you've just understood that probably is, is not very helpful for you, you really want to do great in your academics, what would be one thing if there, if you were able to change 
in order for you to study what would that one thing be. So I'm helping her to think what is contributing to for me to resolve this problem. May, she may say, OK, maybe I should give up my captainship or that I must spend a little bit more. I must organize my day in such a way that I, I can study also. So whatever, whatever she's choosing to do to, to bring about that. And so once she says that, I say, OK, you feel dash because you cannot dash and you want to dash. So if you see, um, OK, I'll, I'll, I'll look at the um, uh, look at the example. OK, so here. It says, you feel bad because you cannot put in the hours required to study, and you really want to do well in your exams. OK? So you have spoken about the problem that you cannot put in the hours required because you are in the basketball team. OK? But you want to be able to do well in your exams. So, so you have personalized the goal. The goal is, I want to do well in my exams. What is my problem? I can't put in enough hours required in this. And how do I feel about it? I feel bad about this, right? So here, when you, you when you come to a place of helping them to personalize their goals, you're, you're discussing this. You feel dash because of the problem. That is, you cannot put in the hours required. And the uh, probable goal, which is, I want to be able to do well in my exams. All right? OK. So from here is you get them to a place of being much more uh, 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 ready, much more ready to have to to start on with their with their next journey. Okay, into initiating the action. So this is where, if you've got your counselee to this place where they're able to personalize the feeling. And the personalizing the feeling happens at every point of time. That's why you see all the ways you see, you feel, you feel, you feel. You're pers helping them personalize the feeling. You help them personalize the meaning of, of what the situation is. You help them personalize the problem. And then you help them personalize the goal. OK? Now, once you're able to do this, what, what you do next is you need to have a feeling check with respect to goals. So she, she says, I want to do well in exams. So then I ask her, okay, what would it make you feel if you do well in your exams? So she may say, I feel hopeful because I'm going to figure out a way of how I can do well in my exams. So then I built that sense of a personalizing the feeling of what could be the certain goals and what she could be feeling, really helping her to look a little into the future with hope. Whenever your counselor comes in, you really want to help them to see hope. Want them to want them to see that there is something that they can do to make their situation better. So, so that's why always do a feeling check, even when you you're getting certain goals in place with respect to their goals. Okay, so you say, okay, you feel hopeful because you're going to figure out how you can do well in your exams, right? Now, when you reach there. The next part is initiating action, which is what we're going to do next. But just to follow up with this, um, with uh, with Anita's case, so I'll I may say, okay, so if you needed to do well in your exams, what would be some strategies you may need to follow? So she may she may bring about two, three, four strategies, and then build that up. Okay, strategy number one: whose help do you need for that? What time would you require for that? Uh, who will know that you've done a good job once you've done it? So, so you're actually building up the action point. Okay. So, till here is where you're bringing them to a place of person and saying, "Okay, this is where I am. This is where I want to go, and I feel hopeful because I've understood what my problem is. I know this is my goal. I have to get to this place, and that's where you work with personalizing. So, in summary. When you're personalizing, you need to really build a strong base of understanding your counselee and their problem and where they're at, respond to their feelings and the content, personalize the meaning, personalize the problem, and finally, personalize the goal so that you get them to a place of moving into the next step, which is to initiate the action. OK? All right. Uh, I'm open for questions. Any questions?
Questions? No questions. Prince, no question, or you didn't understand? Which of it? OK, no one, no one has any thoughts? No, no questions, nothing? Very clear. OK, all right. Um, I think we'll stop for a break right now. Because if I start for the next, I, you know, I, I will need to have that flow. So let's take a break, and it's early. It's ten forty-six. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll be back by uh, eleven. Okay, we'll take a extended break of fourteen minutes. See you soon.